Our new quest is to unlock more of the mysteries surrounding the location of the huge Bryce's Water Ace, with its intakes, sluice gates, siphons and flumings. Although maps show the location of the intake weir on the Ringaruma River, we were somewhat puzzled after flying the drone over the site. No weir or dam was to be seen. In 1902, a Miss A.E. Fraser rode side saddle from Derby to explore the Bryce's race under construction. The rough, boggy bush track led them up the Ringaruma River until the white gravel embankment that was a weir or dam came into sight. Dismounting, she gazed onto a fairy lake five feet deep, mirroring the dark forest with numerous man ferns poking their heads above the surface. Two powerful sluice gates turned by massive iron screws allow the water and accumulated silt to be swept away. This description in 1902 gave us the clue to the location of the lake. The unsuccessful drone flight necessitated an on-ground exploration to see if we could locate any remains of the substantial weir with assistance from local dairy farmer Darrell Forsyth, who switched off numerous electric fences, right. we headed for the general location of the intake. Well, there's something. There's a bit of wood, some concrete. Concrete. Looks like a sluice hey. gate. That's the weir. That's not the weir. The, the race. The yeah. That's exactly what we're looking for. So this is actually the intake from the dam. The dam used to be over there. Yeah. This concrete control gate doesn't appear in any of the original photographs taken in 1902 and it may have been a later addition or repair. Now that we're in the general area of the intake and weir, we set off to search for the embankment, which was 200 metres long. An earlier reconnoitre showed that waders were needed for a number of reasons. Staying dry, snake bite prevention and ward off blackberries and prickly wattle. The rounded pebbles underfoot were uneven and slippery. Holding a video camera and a walking pole made life interesting for a while, especially for senior citizens. This part of the construction was possibly the bywash, which prevented overflow of the dam in flood time. So that is what? The first structure we saw on the embankment was part of a concrete wall, which I think was a later addition to the intake, possibly to repair damage. I reckon if you go along there, look, you can climb up onto it. Okay. So this is the dam or weir. They call it a weir. I didn't think we'd find it quite as easy. We walked along the top of the embankment, searching for either of the two sluice gates which are shown in the early 1902 photographs. Hmm? However, okay. we didn't find any trace of these and assumed they had been filled in at a later time. 
The dam is constructed of earth and is 528 feet long, with an average height of 12 feet. At one end is a bywash 115 foot long to pass floodwaters away from the dam. The dam is constructed merely to head up the water into the race and form a settling pond for tailings washed down from mining operations upstream. Imagine having to shovel all this. This is all spade work. Our failure to find the sluice gates probably explains why the lake has disappeared, as now there was no way to flush out the silt brought down by the river. I reckon there's obviously someone's walked along here. When I flew the drone along the embankment on a second flight, I think I spotted a platypus swimming down the river in front of the wall, but it could have been a duck. Because that's the corner over there. In 1902, Miss Fraser forded the river on foot while one of the attendant men carried the baby across on a fallen tree. So all of that used to be water. It must have been fairly shallow though. This is my guesstimate as to the original construction of the dam, bywash and sluice gates. Well, that corner up there, you see there, that's and I reckon the river still goes down there when it's in flood. Can you get along there? I don't know, can, is there a track down there? No. No, there's, the, the track kind of runs out up here. Yeah, so I think this is the bywash, what they call the bywash. And judging by the way these plants are all growing, I reckon the water streams over here at times. Yeah, it's all gravel up there, I think. Yeah. On further reflection and study of photographs of the dam in 1902, I realised that this section that contained the two sluice gates had washed away. We now retraced our steps across the embankment or dam and started our way to follow the water race by flying the drone down the valley. This is the line of the Ringaruma part of the Bryce's water race, which was a substantial undertaking. We were now searching for where the Ringaruma race and the Morris race were joined together by a high level fluming. The country is thickly timbered and a clearing had to be made some distance on either side of the race so that falling trees would not obstruct and damage the race. That is steep. A, a what? A buck. You're going to get the bucket. 
So, walking along the old Bryce's water race. Man, this would have taken some digging. Miss Fraser describes the races. The channels are three foot six deep, six feet wide at the bottom and nine feet at the top, and are carried along steep hillsides and through masses of granite boulders. Well, that's a blast rock in places. Rock there. They blew their way through here. Does it actually keep going? Good place for leeches. Right. It's a bit thick. There's an inch later off the phone line. Oh. Yeah. It took a number of visits to locate the exact point of the junction as it was hidden in a steep gully and partially covered by a new road. Miss Fraser came to the junction of the Morris and Ringarooma races. At this point both races run in flumings and meet at a height of 40 feet above the bed of the river. The track crosses the race twice and at times we walked hand in hand along the top of the flumings. Talking to Ted Forsyth today, he recounts that as a child, he also walked across a twin high-level fluming. It was solidly constructed from timber with handrails, but you could see the river rushing through 40 feet below. After locating the junction, I climbed down into the gorge to search for remains of the timber fluming but instead found pipes that had been used in the 1970s to construct an irrigation scheme on the Forsyth property. Climbing back out of the gully, I had one last puzzle to solve. Exactly where did the race cross the old road? Here at last I found where the race ran under the road and emerged on the other side. Our next challenge is to find out where the water comes from that joined the Ringarooma race. 
to answer that, we will have to visit Dunn's Creek. But that's another story. <laughs>